Good day, YouTube. 1MJ here, and welcome back. All right, Wednesday morning here in Australia, and the market has jumped up a bit. Today was the official day where the Bitcoin ETF uh, kicked off, and it did quite well, uh, which was yeah, not not unsurprisingly, really. Uh, I thought it would do not too bad. And look, it's early days. It's just the first day. I think there's still a a lot of money that's going to come into this space some's going to be hesitant and they're going to wait thinking it's going to dip and look it may dip but eventually they'll probably go look it hasn't dipped if it doesn't and they're just going to jump in anyway and the price will still really start to rise now again unfortunately the etf is a futures one so they're not actually buying spot bitcoin but still if a lot of people are putting money into bitcoin then it will rise the price and i don't think it'll be too far away until we get a spot etf but i don't think that comes till next year in all fairness i don't think we see it this year all right so 2.54 trillion so the market is up 2.1 percent look at bitcoin dominance though jumped up we're nearly at 48 percent this is going to get into the 50 percent it'll be interesting to see if it can get into the 60 70 percent range this is why I personally, and again, never financial advice. I, I, you know, I say you got to have some Bitcoin in your portfolio. You know, minimum thirty percent for me. That's me though. You got to do you. You work out what's going to work for you. But Bitcoin is still a great investment. Again, in my opinion, uh, not financial advice. Look at that. Just cracked over sixty four thousand. Nice. Very nice. And probably going to continue to rise. We'll have to wait and see. There could be a bit of a, a pullback, but. I don't see anything kind of major, but in saying that, look, <laughs> we're at all-time highs, so there's going to be big players, particularly if too many people start to go really long on the leverage. That's where we're going to see a correction. And it just dropped down below <laughs> 64,000. But yeah, a minimum 30% uh, Bitcoin for me. I still like my altcoins, and hence why I've got, you know, 70, uh, a little bit under 70%, because my Bitcoins are around about a little over 33%, 35%. But I got about 70% in altcoins. But look, a big portion of that is in Ethereum. And so I really believe in altcoins. Don't get me wrong. And in some good ones, I hope. But Bitcoin is still the basis. And again, it is really kind of leading the rally at the moment. Hence why I believe you should have a, yeah, at least a third of your portfolio in Bitcoin. If not, maybe even more. Some people say 50% or more. You know, again, that's always your decision. You've got to do your own research and work it out for yourself. But for me, it's a minimum 30%. All right, gas prices. Mm. Not great. Still, you know, you try and do an average transaction at the moment, you're probably going to pay around about uh, a smart contract one, 50 sort of dollars to do a smart contract one. But just to send some coins here and there, then you're looking, I think $6 would be on the low end. I think you're probably still more up around 10 or 15. But anyway, they are where they are. All right, let's have a look. Last 24 hours in the top 100, what's performed the best? We know Bitcoin's going to be up there. Oh, have a look at that. OKB, OK, nice. Olympus. But again, these coins are coins that were dumping literally just the other day. Now, Adam has brought out uh, a new network, and it's like a canary chain similar to Kasama. So this might have some of the reason to do with why Adam is doing so well. It was also down uh, in the last couple of days. Ah, we've Harmony One. There we go. Safe Moon. <laughs> Good Lord. So Terra, nice having a nice move. So there's definitely a few coins that are moving. And there we go. Bitcoin uh, is the twentieth biggest mover. <sighs> it's sitting quite nice. And look, the other BTCs are all doing sort of exactly the same. So we got some good movers, but we got to remember this is only a two point one percent gain. Wait until things really start to fire off. Uh, and, and that's the kind of scary part that we haven't seen any really big exponential moves. You know, things, you'll know when it's time to take profit. Things are going to be crazy. You're going to have numerous coins with 20, 30% gains within 24 hours. And that is usually a good indication that we're reaching a peak. Now, not just one, not just sort of two or three, because you can have two or three or four coins with, you know, 30 uh, maybe even 40% gains. And then if the others are just kind of low single digits and things like that, then it's not quite time. But when you see multiple double digit coins uh, gaining in the 24 hours, I'm not saying that's the exact day, but you're definitely close to the point where things are just getting a little bit overheated. And that's when I would, my personal opinion, 
would be probably consider taking some profits. But you do you, I'm going to do me. I'm just letting you know what my thoughts are. Again, I am not a financial advisor, so you got to work it out for yourself. All right, what about losses though? Market's up 2.1%, but there's always going to be some outliers. All right, so there we go. Flow's down, DYDX is down, Stacks is down, but they were pumping uh, quite well for the last week. So again, these are coins that did well literally a couple of days ago, and now they're having a pullback. Shiba Inu was one of them, Thorchain, Perp. But I mean, have a look. It's all single-digit losses, no major double-digit losses. And again, these are all coins that were generally doing pretty well in the days prior. So it is what it is. Nothing too great, but still... We'll take again any day of the week. All right, have a look at Bitcoin. Finally, it's been done. It is just, oh, now it's sitting about right on that kind of mark we can see. Now it's just over. So it's about to break that $63,900 level. We saw that it did get to 64000 for a minute there. What's this top? It's almost 64.4, I think. Yeah, 64.4 thereabouts uh, it wicked up to. And has a little pullback but again this is nine o'clock at night uh stateside time so their trading's all down now we're waiting to see what's going to happen with asia we know that the chinese are finding it a little bit harder to get into bitcoin now with the rules over there but this is bitcoin making quite a nice move now again we have no major pullbacks here we have some big wicks but nothing major so just keep an eye out but this is what i spoke about the other day that it's what you could call a breakout trade. So what you're waiting for is a project to break into new all-time highs. Now, it can still do a few things. Sometimes it can get rejected really hard, so it'll just kind of wick over and then you'll have a big rejection. And it could be uh, what they call a double top. That's completely possible. I don't think that's what's going to happen here, but it could come down. But what you're waiting for really is for a coin to kind of break into a new all-time high and that's where you want to get in when it gets uh, when it breaks above it. But we need a clean candle close. Now again, it's not guaranteed. It's just a higher percentage trade. Again, this is called a breakout trade. So what it could quite likely do, not guaranteed, is it breaks out, it comes back down, retests the old all-time high, and then starts to go higher. So that is when I'm not too scared to be investing in something that's uh, at a new all-time high particularly if it's early in a new all-time high because this is cryptocurrencies it's not the uh, old stock world where things travel uh, you know slowly a breakout trade on a new all-time high can really lead to you know something extremely big but again it's never guaranteed though so I don't want you to think oh well, if something goes to a new all-time high that's the time I just chuck all my money in no absolutely not be very careful doing that but this could be a good breakout trade. And for me, you know, I'm putting 30% into Bitcoin and I am starting to uh, look into alts now that we are up here, but I'm still not going crazy. I've always got 20% of my DCA stays in cash. So in case there is a dip, I can buy the dip. But again, if the dip comes, say we get a big 20, 30% correction, I'm not grabbing all my cash and throwing it all in. I will get 50% of my cash and throw it in on a 20, 30% dip. And then I'll leave that other 50%. Because what happens if it goes down another 10, 15% from there? I've got no money if I put it all in. So if it goes down another 10, 15% from there, then I will put in another 50% of my cash reserves. And then I'm waiting for, you know, uh, bigger retracements again. So I always have cash on the side. And again, when I DCA, I make sure I always have cash on the side. And that's how you can continue to buy the dip. Now, sometimes, you know, you've got to take a bit of a chance. And again, you just go, I think this is the bottom. And you did. Now, I did. I put all my sort of cash reserves, or pretty much all of it. I had almost nothing left back in around about here. But I was putting a lot of that into altcoins, still a little bit into Bitcoin. Now, unfortunately, it dipped further and I didn't get to take advantage of this. And I had no cash and I missed out on this and I took until sort of, I don't know, back around about here before I started having uh, more cash. So that is something that I have learned. Uh, don't do that. But look, putting all my money in sort of back around about here wasn't so bad because, yeah, I missed this, but I've still been uh, putting money in. And again, I now have cash sitting on the side, not a whole lot, uh, only a, a very small amount compared to what I had once upon a time, but things... Uh, I've got cash on the side. And again, I'll make sure that I've always got cash on the side. You know, 
a rule of thumb, and again, none of this is financial advice. I, I have to say that to make sure people don't ever think it is. But try and keep around about 20% of whatever you have in cash at all times. Again, unless there's a really big dip, then absolutely you want to deploy some cash. But don't go all in. That's very risky. And again, I did it, and I do regret it a little bit because I did it somewhere sort of around about here. It definitely wasn't down here. It was up and around about here. And then I wasn't able to take advantage of that kind of stuff. It might have even been more sort of back around here. I can't remember exactly, but I know I missed out on some of the dips because I didn't have any cash left. So that's a lesson I've learned. But things are looking good. There we go. It's jumped back above. So now we're at 64,200. So again, this could be considered a breakout trade. You've got to wait and see if this actually has the close that we're looking for at the end of the day. So it's nine o'clock at night over there. Still got a few hours to go stateside time. And again, this is generally when Asia starts to get in and uh, Australia falls in part of that. So Australasian area, we start to invest because it's daytime for us. So this could be a good, uh, you know, sort of breakout. Maybe we get to 65,000. Again, then maybe we have a sort of red candle day and we come back and retest around here. It could even dip below a little bit, but then we're looking for it to bounce back up. And if that's the case, this could be a very good breakout trade. All right, a couple of stories I want to focus on. So the first Bitcoin futures ETF traded at nearly $1 billion in the first day. So that was today, sort of slash yesterday, <laughs> Australia time. And it nearly broke the trading record for any debuting, debuting ETF. Almost, not quite. And again, look, it's still going now. So uh, by the end of the day, it could well have done that. But I suppose this is more American uh, markets. Now, the only ETF that's ever done better uh, is the BlackRock's Carbon uh, Transition Readiness ETF. And that was back in April, so only a few months ago. And, you know, the whole carbon thing and becoming uh, carbon neutral is quite big. And that has done extremely well. And you got to remember, there's still a lot of people who don't want to put money into Bitcoin because they think it's uh, not really based on green energy. And, you know, they would rather get into, you know, the carbon ETF. But it is only a matter of time. Once Bitcoin starts to go, you know, basically all, all green, I mean, it'll probably unlikely be ever all green or at least not ever, but for a long, long time. We're still using fossil fuels and there's always going to be places that will continue to use that. But once you start to see Bitcoin at like 75, 80, you know, 90% green renewable energy, you will see a lot more money come into the space. And look, a lot more money will come into the space as the price grows. The scary thing is, is what could happen when Bitcoin hits that kind of 100K mark. Now, we could have a big retracement before 100K. We could have a big retracement sort of around 100 just after it, or maybe we just completely blow through it because that is probably where the kind of FOMO is really going to kick in for a lot of not just average retail Joes, but even some of the institutions, they're going to go, oh my God, this is 100,000 and people have been talking about it going to a million. Well, we can still 10x our money and so they're going to jump on board. That is a distinct possibility and something that could happen. You know, I don't have a crystal ball. I can't tell you exactly what's going to happen. But for me, again, I just put 30% of my DCA into Bitcoin. Now, once we get up to around about $100,000, again, I've got my cash sitting on the side 20% every single time. If there is any big dip, say we go from 100000 and come all the way back down to sixty maybe even 50,000. I don't think we'll see 50,000 from 100,000, but it's possible. Well, I'm going to have my cash ready. And I'm not sure that we're going to see those elongated bear cycles anymore. I could be completely wrong. Maybe the four-year cycle is going to play out exactly the same. But all I know is that if I see a 40 to 60% correction on Bitcoin, I'm happy to put my money in. Now, not all of it, again, but I'll probably put a good percentage of it. Again, maybe sort of 50% of my cash reserves will go in at around about a 50% correction. Uh, maybe not. Again, maybe it'll be a little bit less. We'll have to wait and see. Like particularly if Bitcoin has this crazy blow off top of, you know, three hundred, four hundred thousand dollars $400,000, I probably won't be looking to deploy my cash at a 50% retracement. I might be looking for a little bit more. But look, that could change tomorrow. It all depends on you know how things are performing around the world and everything else that's going on. But that's my strategy. I like to keep everyone up to date. 
And yeah, that's my plan is I'm always going to have that cash sitting on the side and I'm going to take advantage of the big dips. I'm still dollar cost averaging into Bitcoin basically all the time. 30% of my uh, you know weekly fortnightly money that I'm putting in, 30% goes towards the big towards Bitcoin. I always want to have exposure to it, but I will have a good cash reserve sitting on the side for when the bigger dips come. And again, I'll be taking profits from altcoins and things like that. And there may well even be uh, points where I take some uh, money off the table in Bitcoin, hoping to buy in cheaper. But look, I know that's not always going to work. And if I get it wrong, then so be it. It is what it is. It won't be any large position in Bitcoin that I'll be selling off until Bitcoin's basically well above 100,000. We're talking 250, half a million dollars. That's where I'll probably start to, you know, look at taking bigger chunks out of bitcoin again to you know invest in other things but until then i'm happy to just buy and hold i'm not in any rush you know i can wait another five or ten years for my money to 10x it's unlikely to happen in the stock market but it is definitely uh, a lot more likely to happen with bitcoin but again that's not financial advice and nothing in life is guaranteed right i brought a story a while ago there was a politician over in canada and uh, he was the opposition party, I think it was in Canada, and he was getting very pro-crypto. Politicians around the world are starting to go this way. Now, not the traditional old politicians. They're still very, you know, in that old traditional finance sector. But new ones coming through, they absolutely are. And here's another one. So Andrew Yang reveals his political party will be pro-crypto. So the leader of the forward party, Andrew Yang, said his political organization will will have a pro-crypto currency approach. Now, what's scary is like here in Australia, we've got the Labor and the Liberal parties. And we've had them forever and a day. There are new parties that have come along, but none of them have really taken off and become that big. And I... Uh, I'm going to say it's probably similar over in the states and other countries. You have your, you know, parties that've been in for a long time. The new generation coming through, I think they may eventually bring on new parties to be, you know, political powers because they have pro cryptocurrency approaches and they move away from centralization and they've moved towards decentralization, which is what a lot of the young people are really into. They want things to be green. They want things to be fair. They don't want walled gardens where the rich stay rich, you know, the working class stay working class and the poor stay poor. And unfortunately, the old system really has perpetuated that. So it'll be interesting to see if this will be enough to really push, you know, new political powers, uh, political parties into positions of power because most of the time they're just a kind of a little side bit where the big political parties, you know, throw them a couple of, you know, crumbs here and there for things that they want but really you know the old way and the old system has stayed how it has for a really long time is crypto going to be one of those things that really changes lots of things into the future and is it going to be because you know again newer younger less known political parties really jump on board this that's that's going to be interesting and don't get me wrong i don't think it's coming in the next five years probably not even the next 10 but maybe the next sort of 20 years i think we could definitely see it but maybe earlier i know a lot of people really are kind of done with the old way but there's still quite a large population particularly boomers and things like that they're happy for things to say the same and that's what happens to a lot of people as you get older you're, you're less uh, inclined to change now again that's a generalization it's not for everybody but a lot of people as they get older they're happy for things to just stay the same they're not overly interested in learning uh, new things or at least not so much learning new things but having to change uh, on any mass kind of way all right russia we know that they have been looking to get rid of the US dollar uh, and move into something else. And they've now come out and says they aim to replace US dollar reserves with digital assets in the long term. So again, uh, Russia was very anti sort of crypto. Now this says digital assets, doesn't specifically say cryptocurrencies. So that could be, again, their own uh, digital, I think it's going to be ruble or something like that. I can't even remember what the money is over in Russia, but I'm sure they're planning on bringing out some digital version of money. And that's probably what they're looking to. But also, I would not be surprised if they start to use cryptocurrencies. And again, maybe the dollar, you know, the yuan or a digital pound or who knows, but I know they definitely are trying to 
get rid of having to use the US dollar but they do know that things like oil it's going to be pretty hard to settle oil in anything but the US dollar all right Facebook uh, and their Novi wallet is getting ready to be rolled out and they're going to use Coinbase as a custody partner for the new rollout so they're launching their Novi crypto wallet today in the United States and Guatemala so it's finally here it's been a long time coming for them but it's finally here but the initial rollout is only going to allow the traders to trade in the Paxos dollar US stablecoin and that's going to be secured by Coinbase so we've been hearing about Facebook's DM and all the rest of it well their wallet at least is finally here so now we're going to have to wait and see just how big this can get Facebook has Facebook itself not the company the actual site Facebook has been losing dominance and relevance for a really long time the newer generation they're into snapchat and Instagram and TikTok and things like that it's really oldies <laughs> who still use Facebook and look I use it a little bit but nowhere near as much as I uh, used to I'm much more into Twitter these days but Facebook still has its place so it's going to be interesting to see if Facebook's Novi wallet can really be this behemoth that governments were worried about uh, and, and had people really scared but it's not so much the wallet that scared them it was their uh, stable coins and things that had governments worried and they're still looking uh, into their stable coins and that but it's here the day has come Facebook's digital wallet is here now we'll have to wait and see you know whether they're I think it's, again DM uh, stable coin will be able to be rolled out and again be the the US dollar killer that people were really worried about right last but not least stock to flow model starting to look a whole lot better look at that it's starting to push up and again that kind of hundred thousand dollar mark so that goes a little bit above the stock to flow model it's up around about here you can't see it doesn't quite line up with it. it's just under how much higher will we go above stock to flow because there's a lot of people thinking the 100k mark is kind of it and it's just going to sell off really hard uh, at around about there you know like big boys come out and said he thinks around maybe 120 130 but then there's a whole lot of other people that are super bullish and thinking that 200 you know 150 plus to you know 300 400 still in play look honestly i got no idea i really don't know all i look at is stock to flow because it's the best indicator that we've had look how high it's gone above uh, the stock to flow on previous occasions and even down below here it's gone well above now not so much here but this was only a little blow off top this one was fairly high uh, this one only just got there but again that's was you know heavy manipulation to try and scare people out and now look where we are we're still well below this so you know time's going to tell just how high can bitcoin go again for me you know, 100,000, I may take a little bit of profit and see if I can time the market and buy back in again at a cheaper price. But I'm really not looking to take any significant kind of profits in Bitcoin until kind of that quarter of a million, half a million dollar mark. Because again, a lot of people think Bitcoin is going to a million dollars. Now, even if it doesn't go to a million dollars exactly when they say it's going to, based on previous history, it's most likely going to go a whole lot higher and that's enough for me I can get into stocks and things like that stocks don't have these kind of returns now again we could have a really brutal bear market so I absolutely plan to take some profits particularly through my altcoins and things like that and again I will probably take some off the table in Bitcoin just to see if I can time the market well but if I don't I'm not too worried I don't plan on selling much Bitcoin at all I'd love to know your thoughts just how high do you think Bitcoin's going to go in this run? And also, when do you think we're going to peak out? Everyone's sort of saying they think it's coming, you know, December-ish, maybe January. I know Nicholas Merton from Data Dash has said that he suspects it could go well into the later half of next year. And I'm kind of more leaning towards that. I don't know if we're going to get this big blow off top in December, January. We might get a sort of blow off top in a retracement and then it all pushes back up again. But I just don't think the actual peak is going to come again when everybody's expecting it to that is usually when things don't happen not always could come you know they could be completely right we'll have to wait and see but let me know your thoughts down below that's it from me stay safe be kind to one another should all be on that gain train at the moment particularly if you've got a good position in bitcoin and i'll see you next time